Coming up on this edition of SUTV News, homecoming has NDSU ablaze with excitement. A computer glitch causes students to get upset. And in sports, the Bison football team opens Missouri Valley Conference play. This is SUTV News, and it starts now. Welcome to SUTV News. My name's Aaron Berner. And I'm Allie Weary. The Bison football team will take to the field on Saturday with its starting running back, Sam Jury, is suspended for NDSU's homecoming game against Youngstown State. He and nine other current Bison football players pleaded guilty to election fraud charges and received the following sentences earlier this week. The players were each sentenced with 360 days of unsupervised probation, a $300 legislative fee, 50 hours of community service, and a $25 community service fee. In all, 13 were arrested and charged with election fraud, a Class A misdemeanor. Three are former Bison players. Head coach Craig Bull made it clear that Ogiri's suspension wasn't based on this one incident. The 10 players were charged with election fraud after they forged signatures on petitions. This resulted in two measures being barred from the November election. NDSU President Dean Brashani now considers the case closed from a university standpoint. NDSU President Dean Brashani delivered this year's State of the University address at 11 a.m. today before a packed house at the Festival Concert Hall. Brashani spoke of NDSU's continued standing as a top 100 research institution and also of NDSU's huge impact as the greatest single economic engine in the state. He also talked positively about the NDSU student success tuition model. The model will also eliminate confus the confusing array of student fees by blending them into a single tuition charge. We are the first institution in the state to introduce these exciting improvements. We will be the first to introduce a pan-university differential tuition format as well, which will allow us to more competitively fund high-cost academic programs without overcharging less expensive ones. Brashani also touted the State Board of Education's announcement last week that the music department has now become the School of Music and is one of just 49 schools accredited by the National Association of Schools of Music. The biggest ceramic kiln in the Midwest fired up this week. Artists and students spent hours filling it with hundreds of original ceramic pieces to be fired in the most unique way possible. SUTV <laughs> News reporter Sana Prescott has more on the story. Ancient art form has been masterfully recreated right here in Fargo, North Dakota, taking the shape of a wood fire kiln. The mission of this seven year project was to give students a non-traditional classroom setting to apply active learning while teaching sustainability and local sourcing. The materials it takes to run the wood kiln are all local to Fargo. Well, we've been using local clay from Hebron, North Dakota for the last 10 years at least. And all these outside brick are from Hebron Brick Company. And all the clay that we still use is from Hebron Brick Company. Um, the wood that we use to fire the kiln is locally grown and it's actually part of the waste stream. It's the first part that they cut off the log. The kiln also presents ceramic artists with the ability to expand their creative visions, especially in terms of height. It gives us a lot of opportunity to fire pots. Uh, it's a huge kiln, so we can fire really tall work, unlike in some of the other kilns. An electric kiln is only about 27 inches, whereas this is over five feet tall. Later next week, after many days of firing, the ceramics will be finished and their historical, glittering new wood fire identities will make their first impressions on Fargo, North Dakota. We've uh, accomplished what we set out to do. And now it's not really an end, it's really a beginning. This is Sana Prescott reporting for SUTV News. The kiln is scheduled to fire again next semester. With more students interacting through social media, NDSU is taking advantage of websites like Facebook and YouTube to pull prospective students in. According to a recent survey, high schoolers are turning to social media websites to make their final decision of which college to choose. It shows that colleges involved with students online are more likely to attract those students. Many say they enjoy the opportunity to connect with other students as well as counselors about the admission process. Because for some students, they may prefer visiting with us on a Facebook page or asking a question on the Facebook page. Others may not. Others may prefer picking up the phone and calling. So it's making sure that we have methods in place and mechanisms in place to accommodate how our students want a communication. 
NDSU's Office of Admission currently has a Facebook page as well as a YouTube account to connect with prospective students. Students get political fever as the first presidential, presidential debate heats up. This and more when we come back. Jitters is your home for quality coffee drinks. Whether you crave an espresso, iced coffee, mocha, or macchiato, Jitters has just what you need. Now featuring breakfast foods like caramel rolls, bagels, and more, be sure to get your day started right. Located on 12th Avenue North, Jitters has a friendly, relaxed atmosphere with Wi-Fi capability to get all of your studying done on time. Get your fix only at Jitters. Hey, I'm Alex. I'm Austin. And I'm here to tell you about 15 on 15. It means MapBus arrives every 15 minutes on Route 15. From downtown to around town. Find out more about 15 on 15 at MapBus.com. Check it out on Facebook and Twitter. Keyword, MapBus. So fast and convenient. There are way more than 15 reasons to check out 15 on 15. I ride MapBus. And I ride MapBus. And, and you, you should, should too. too. Watch SU TV News on Cable One. Produced by students of Bison Information Network, we promise to bring you all the latest news and sports from the campus of North Dakota State University. Watch SU TV News on Cable One Channel 14. Brought to you in part by Shields and Stop and Go. SU TV News is brought to you by Stop and Go. Stop and Go, we're always there. Welcome back to SU TV News. It's presidential debate season and the first of four was held last night. NDSU's College of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences held a debate watching party in Menard Hall as President Barack Obama went up against Republican challenger Mitt Romney. The Fargo-Moorhead community gathered to watch and to play a rousing game of debate bingo. If a candidate said a word that was a square on their bingo card, they got to mark it. Prizes were awarded to winners, and students were excited at the opportunity to voice their opinions and get some added incentives thrown their way. Well, I was going to watch the presidential debate either way, but uh, I'm in an American government class, and my teacher offered extra credit for it. and. I thought it would be good to be in a place where uh, people could actually respond to what was being said and I wasn't just sitting there by myself Have watching. A terrific evening for all the next you. debate watching party will be October 11th in the IAC when Vice President Joe Biden faces off against Congressman Paul Ryan. Students may have noticed that surveys about drugs and alcohol were circulated around campus. The President's Council began the surveys about drugs on October 1st. St statistics show that at NDSU, alcohol is the drug of choice. 72% of students reported they have had alcohol in the last 30 days. 15% of students don't use alcohol at all. The last time this survey was done, marijuana at, N at NDSU was very low compared to the national statistics. It's an anonymous survey, um, so it's perfectly acceptable for students, even who are underage, um, to report any of their alcohol or drug use behaviors. We really just want to get an idea of what we're seeing among our NDSU students, and that helps us inform what our prevention efforts will be for the upcoming couple of years. Um, this is the sixth time that we've done the survey in the past 10 years. Approximately 800 students were surveyed in classrooms chosen through random selection. The data gathered will be compared to surveys done throughout the last 12 years. Fargo is filled with excitement over NDSU's homecoming football game. This week's segment of Simple Health takes a look at Bison fans. Alcohol can be safe and an enjoyable part of football games, but it can also create problems and harm your health. NDSU's Before One More campaign explains drinking is most risky during events. 
before driving and while underage. Underage tailgaters should not drink and others should know how much is too much. To reduce your risk, make sure to know how much you are drinking and to control your environment. Events like that, there's going to be drinking at them, so um, it's kind of inevitable, but I think people can still be responsible when they do drink. Um, it's nice that the Fargo Dome is dry, so they don't sell any alcohol in there, so you have to finish your drinking before you go inside of the game. So. Live Real Mentors report 92% of NDSU students do not need alcohol to have a good time. And many students are left without a ticket to this week's homecoming football game. We'll take a closer look at what happened after this. Watch SUTV News on Cable One. Produced by students of Bison Information Network, we promise to bring you all the latest news and sports from the campus of North Dakota State University. Watch SUTV News on Cable One Channel 14. Brought to you in part by Shields and Stop and Go. Hey, I'm Alex. I'm Austin. And I'm here to tell you about 15 on 15. It means Matt Bus arrives every 15 minutes on Route 15. From downtown to around town. Find out more about 15 on 15 at mattbus.com. Check it out on Facebook and Twitter. Keyword, Matt Bus. So fast and convenient. There are way more than 15 reasons to check out 15 on 15. I ride Matt Bus. And I ride Matt Bus. And, and you, you should, should too. too. Dr. Svetlana Kalina to continue her research in quantum dots. Kalina is the assistant professor of chemistry and biochemistry at NDSU. Quantum dots were discovered in crystals during the 1800s. They convert energy into light faster and more efficiently than conventional energy sources. With the help of supercomputers, Kalina uses quantum dots to conduct computer simulated experiments. Her ultimate goal is to gain insight into the, on the surface chemistry of quantum dots light applications, and solar energy conversions. It's a chance to take a trip in a time machine right in the heart of campus. The Emily Reynolds Historic Costume Collection features both a 1930s baseball costume and a ball gown worn at Abraham Lincoln's inauguration. Founded in the early 1980s, this collection features a variety of clothing and accessories dating back to the 1800s. With other 5,300 items, history can be viewed from a different angle that may be more interesting than sitting in a lecture. A recent 300-piece donation from alumnus Dr. William and Pat Hadler Stark is providing to be a great addition. The, co the combination of a national championship football team and the upcoming homecoming weekend has generated a lot of excitement for Saturday's game. Ja but when thousands of students attempted to log on and mo on Monday to reserve their ticket, they were met with an unpleasant surprise. The online ticket application for the Bison was down for most of Monday, leading to a large amount of eager students not getting their tickets. The surgeon students exposed a flaw in the code supporting the application. Earlier in the afternoon, Information Technology Services at NDSU put in a temporary fix, which allowed a small amount of students to get tickets. A permanent repair was made around 3 p.m., but the ordeal had led to many unhappy students. Our help desk has taken a lot of complaints from students, and 
Um, also, social media kind of exploded with statements. Um, and in my opinion, and everybody who's been working on the problem, completely justifiably. The wait list for the tickets numbers in the thousands. ITS says the problem is fixed and will not happen again. Since its 1996 release, the movie Fargo has brought a lot of fame to the city of Fargo. Now the movie is getting a reboot as a television series. Sidewalk Stampede set out to get the scoop of how students feel about this cold classic's warm renewal. I don't think the original movie was that good. I don't really see how they can turn it into a TV show. Like, what would it even be about? <laughs> I think that if they're trying to make a movie into a TV show, it's gonna not go too well. I mean, the movie is pretty set, and I don't know how you're gonna elaborate and make multiple seasons out of, I mean, two and a half hour movie, so. I guess it'd just be reinforced that like, hey, if they're from Minnesota, North Dakota area, they're kinda, I guess, dumber. That's a, an appropriate word, um, which isn't true, because I mean, got some pretty awesome schools up here, some pretty awesome people, so. When I think Fargo TV show, I have a feeling they're just gonna basically be making fun of North Dakota and Fargo, probably not really following the movie at all, and just kind of making a running joke about us. All right, joining us now is Jake Cheetah, our sports director here. Now, I'd have to agree with some of these students. I'm not really sure how that TV show would play out. I definitely liked the movie when I saw it, but I saw it as more of a joking type movie, which it wasn't made to be. But living up here and living in the cities, it, it came off as a joke to me. So maybe if they take that route for the show, it could be a, a humor show. I don't know. Yeah, but I feel like a show making fun of how we talk isn't the best way to go about it. I mean, I know I definitely do sound like it after I watch the movie. I totally hear myself sounding exactly like they do in the movie. I think they should do more of like a real world Fargo and make people try and survive in the Fargo winter with all the winds and stuff. Well, When we come back, the Bison football team traveled on the road to Iowa. This and more when we return with SUTV Sports. More than 400 million people use Facebook to stay connected with family, friends and colleagues. In addition to the millions of others who use Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest and Flickr for networking purposes. While Facebook and other social media sites are great tools to help you connect with friends and build networks, you should also be aware of the potential dangers associated with using these tools. So let's talk tech. First of all, always be mindful of what you and your friends are posting online. Nothing online is private, no matter what security settings a website may boast. Anything posted online stays online. So take time to consider what you and your friends are putting online before you post it. For example, do you want your potential employers or your current boss to see embarrassing pictures that your friends have posted? There is also the question of how much information should you disclose on a social media site. Posting too much personal information could lead to lost job opportunities, harassment, internet stalking, and identity theft. Don't publicize information that the public doesn't need to know. Finally, you should think about who you want to see those things you've posted online by evaluating the appropriateness of the privacy settings on your social media site. It is recommended that you customize your settings such that only your close friends can see your personal information, such as your home address, email, and phone numbers. Ideally, this information should not even be online. Additionally, social media networks frequently update their security protocols, so be sure to review and update your security settings regularly. With these precautions, you will be well on your way to enjoying a safe and secure social networking experience. SUTV Sports is brought to you by Shields, 
Ready for your next big adventure? Welcome to Shields. Welcome back. The Bison football team traveled on the road last weekend to take on their first Missouri Valley opponent of the season. NDSU held strong again with a dominant victory over the UNI Panthers in Iowa. Heading down to the Unidome now, they're sh sharing handoffs, shakes before the game, excuse me. In the second quarter, David Johnson will get the handoff and bust it for one yard. The Bison trail 7-3 for only the second time this season. Later on in the second, Ben LeCompte has his first punt in almost three weeks. It is coughed up by the defender when he tries to make a move, lands right in the arms of Christian Dudzik. The Bison would take over first down. Later on in that drive, John Crockett would make a move and bust his way in for a three-yard touchdown to give the Bison a 10-7 lead. On the next drive, Sawyer Cole Morgan would get hit by Travis Beck, fumble recovered by Mike Hardy. They would drive down and score again. In the third, Adam Keller hits a career-long 43-yard field goal, one of four he had on the day. In the beginning of the fourth, Brock Jensen drops back 19 yards to Kevin Bodland. The Bison go up 30 to 14 and will win the game 33 to 21. They are now 4-0, 1-0 in the Missouri Valley Conference. The Bison have won nine straight road games. Next, the Bison will be at home versus Youngstown State, the only team to defeat the Bison last season. As the fall golf season comes to a close, both the men and women were in action at Minnehaha Country Club in Sioux Falls. Taking part in their first ever Jackrabbit Invitational, it will be all bison going down in the record books. On the women's side, freshman Haley Bonner on the par 3 seventh hole, she would drop it in just five feet after her drive on that one. She finished 12th on the par for first hole, junior Abby Knudsen hits a long birdie putt. She had a great day and finished 10th in the tournament. The medalist winner was Amy Anderson on the par 4 11th. Anderson gets a long birdie to drop. She won the tournament by 10 shots as you see the ball drop in there. On the men's side, freshman Bill Carlson had a great tournament. On the par 5 12th hole, Carlson's long eagle putt would be rolling on the whole green and come up just shy of the hole. He would make the birdie putt and tie for sixth on the day. The medalist, though, was Nathan Anderson, par 4 17th. Anderson's birdie comes up just short. He makes the par and wins the tournament by one That's shot. performance by the guys. They came out and they started pretty good. They made some early birdies. And then during the middle, middle of the round, there was a little lull where guys were making bogeys. But instead of giving up, they just tightened their belt buckles and, and tried even harder and got the win done. Well, we just have a great, a great bunch. They work hard, they don't quit, they don't give up, and even when things aren't going perfect, I know that this group is going to stick with it, and they're going to fight all the way till the end, and they're going to get it done. And Senior Nathan Anderson led the team to a victory with his second victory in three appearances this year. His sister Amy would also help with a victory. She wins her 16th tournament, one shy of the NCAA record. The Bison women travel to Hawaii in four weeks, while the men travel to Sam Houston State next week. The Bison's women's soccer team had the privilege of opening Summit League play at home against South Dakota State. After multiple double overtime games already this season, the Bison will once again head in to extra time. To the Elig Sports Complex now, this is late, early in the second half, sorry, Diana Potterfeld crosses it, Christian Nyblom would get the goal and put SDSU up one to nothing. With nine minutes left in the game, Jordan Wallenberg drives in and she gets a shot that slips past the goalie to tie the game at one. End of the first overtime, Potterfeld at it again, she has a chance to win it and sends it just over the crossbar. With just 40 seconds left in the game, Anisha Kinnerath makes a move. She sends the cross. Jordan Wallenburn is there for the header. Bison win in double overtime. Their second double overtime home victory of the season. Wallenborn had both goals on that game. For a closer look at this game, we go to Coach Mark Cook, who was mic'd up. Let's go. Come on. Let's go, White. Guys, we talk about it all the time. It's matching the intensity, matching their enthusiasm, okay? This is your house. This is your home. We protect it, all right? Let's go. Come on. Jack, right on Right here, here. Keep it inside, Mary. Keep it there. Keep it there. Move your feet. Uh, 
Finish it. Yeah! Woo! Yes! Come on, boy, here we go! The chance that's gonna come in overtime is ours and the game will be over. Okay, it is on if they keep playing that high line. Okay. Play on Talis' side again, that early ball. First time, flick it in, okay? Win the first one, let's go! Win the first one! Get in! Get in, White! Get in! Beat her! Come on! That's the result we need. That's how we start the conference season. We hold court at home. We've got no issues, okay? Now, we gotta get prepared for a real big weekend ahead of us. Two, another good team, all right? Two good teams, all right? Enjoy tonight, enjoy this game. Back to work on Monday, okay? It's tomorrow off, Monday at three. All right, ladies, that's great stuff. That's great stuff. Special thanks to Coach Mark Cook and NDSU Athletics for allowing us the opportunity to get the inside sounds of the game. Bison Volleyball, they have a nice homestand, two weeks at home. They're going to play five home matches in the next two weeks before the 15th, including a game against UND. All of those will be able to be viewed on GoBison.com. In professional sports, Miguel Cabrera won the Triple Crown, the first Triple Crown won since the 60s. You know, he's had a very impressive season. He had a 330 batting average, 44 home runs, and 139 RBIs. And you know, he led the uh, Detroit Tigers to an AL Central Championship, and uh, they're in the playoffs right now. Well, it's a chance. Well. Watch SUTV News on Cable One. Produced by students of Bison Information Network, we promise to bring you all the latest news and sports from the campus of North Dakota State University. Watch SUTV News on Cable One Channel 14. Brought to you in part by Shields and Stop and Go. Hey, I'm Alex. I'm Austin. And I'm here to tell you about 15 on 15. It means MatBus arrives every 15 minutes on Route 15. From downtown to around town. Find out more about 15 on 15 at MatBus.com. Check it out on Facebook and Twitter. Keyword, MatBus. So fast and convenient. There are way more than 15 reasons to check out 15 on 15. I ride MatBus. And I ride MatBus. And, and you, you should, should too. too. this edition of SUTV News. Check us out at our website or on Facebook and Twitter, and don't forget to pick up your copy of The Spectrum. We'll leave you with the sights of homecoming on campus, and have a great night.